Hi, welcome back to another video. It's been a while. My name is Alice. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I am a composer, an artist, and a French language enthusiast. I'm coming at you today for the first time from my apartment in Courbevoie, which is a couple of k's outside of Paris, where I'm studying. I'm studying uh, in Paris and in Versailles. And I'm gonna make another video about, a bit about that, about life in France, having arrived here about three weeks ago and um, finding an apartment and everything. But, uh, bref, ça va bien. And the reason I'm making this video today is because a few people have asked me about the Dalfseyant exam. For those who don't know, I sat the Dalfseyant in May 2021 and I got pretty good marks. I was really happy with my results, especially for the production orale, for which I got full marks. So in this video, I'm going to talk you a little bit through, in more detail, through my process preparing for the exam. Hello, I actually decided after filming that I'll talk about preparing for the exam in another video, because it was just getting way too long. So if you're interested in how I prepared for the exam, that'll be in part two. Enjoy. How things went on the day, and what you can do to maximize your marks and, and get the best possible result in the Dalfseyant exam and also in, in your um, francophone pursuits, whatever they will be beyond the exam. Okay, so this is mainly focused around the production orale. I'm going to talk you through my exact exam, how things passed. <laughs> Comment les choses se sont passées the day of the exam. So my exam was at 4.30 p.m. Uh, the written component of the Dalf Seant was in the morning, so that was from 9 till 1. So I had this big three and a half hour gap. And I when I received that timetable, I thought, oh no, like I'm gonna like I often have a bit of a slump in the afternoon. And I was like, how am I gonna pick myself back up and, and do the best I can in, in that um part of the exam because that was the bit that I was the most worried for. So what I did was plan my day out to the minute. I knew where I was going to go for lunch. I knew where I was going to do my nervous poo. I knew, <laughs> as in like, obviously I was going to do it in a toilet, but, <laughs> and I knew that for the entire day I would think and speak in French. And of course, like, ça m'est arrivé de speak in, to think in, <laughs> Um, English but every time that happened I would just gently you know like mindfulness I would just gently say okay like on va recommencer à, à penser en français Alice gentiment so yeah when the time came for the exam 4 30 p.m. things were already flowing I'd already spent the whole day just talking to myself in French which you can do if you don't live in a francophone country now I live in France Talking to myself in French in the street just doesn't quite <laughs> have the same charm. I've got some funny looks for sure. Okay, so in this first part of the video, I'm going to talk you through the exam itself, uh, how things went, what happened, and then afterwards I'm going to tell you how I prepared for it and how I made sure I was in the best position to do my best on the day. Okay, so the lady who was kind of running the admin side on the day, uh, right before the exam, explains to me and the other guy in the time slot um, that we are to choose between five bits of paper and each bit of paper is actually a pair of papers, right? So it's 10 papers grouped in pairs and you pick two. You pick two pairs and you have 10 minutes, or this is what happened at least in my exam, you have 10 minutes to read them and choose which topic you're going to do. So each pair is a topic. My topics that I randomly picked from the five, the first one was about travel and it was more specifically about um, small travel and slow travel and kind of new tendance in traveling um, that are to do with like, yeah, sustainability and, you know, traveling in your own backyard and that sort of thing. And also like the different things that people want when they go on holidays you know some people want adventure and some people just want to relax that kind of thing and then the other topic was about architecture and even though i'd done a little i'd done a practice expose on urbanism i it's not my forte to talk about engineering and architecture at all 
And so for me, it was a bit of a no brainer, like talk about travel, like I've been hearing about COVID for a year, like what a great, I can direct the debate towards what I know what I can talk about, which is obviously like, wow, you know, we've all had to rethink travel. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a no brainer for me. That's the one that I chose. Um, once I'd chosen that, the 10 minutes had passed, I think I gave the two papers of the thing that I wasn't going to choose back to the examiner or maybe they stayed on my desk and I had my one hour's preparation. And here I'm really glad I did something which is read the instructions <laughs> because even though I felt extremely well prepared for this production orale, I didn't know that you would be asked to offer your own opinion in the exposé. So obviously, if you're watching this, you probably know that in production oral you have the exposé, which is 10 minutes, and the débat, which is 15, I'm pretty sure. I will go over, maybe exposé is 10 to 15, and the débat is 15 to 20, although that seems long. I'm going to write it on the screen now. But I thought that the exposé was strictly for re resuming the um, main points of the two articles that you read and that you don't share your opinion. And then in the debate, you have a chance to, to argue points and to develop and go beyond what was in the two articles. However, in the instructions, in the exposé, it said you should offer your own opinion. And I was like, really? Like, that goes against everything that... I thought you're supposed to do. Um, I'm so glad I read that. So I don't know when you do your dash sale if that is going to be the case or not. <laughs> I was surprised. Um, but I will just say on the day, no matter how well prepared you are, still read the instructions. Um, there's something very French about that. Like, oh yes, on this exam, we are just going to say uh, you put your own opinion, but only for uh, the dash sale in May. In October, we do not ask for opinion. It is c'est comme ça que ça marche. Um, sorry, France, I love you, but some of the rules and processes and the way things are done here seem so arbitrary. It's just I don't have any words. I hope the traffic noise is alright as well. It's my first time filming in this room, and it's there's a bit of a busy road down there, so. Okay, so I thought, I read these instructions, it says that I'm required to give my own opinion. I think, okay, that goes against what I know of the expose. What I'm going to do is make sure it's really clearly defined where it's my opinion and where it's not. And so I read the articles again. I thought, okay, this one article is about um, things about like slow travel and, and traveling uh, not as far to still have a great experience. And the other is about, you know, what do the French look for when they travel? Is it adventure? Is it relaxation? <sighs> Excuse me. And I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is talk about... I, I actually don't remember what my first two points were, but they were attempting to kind of uh, summarize the main... the common points that I found across the two articles. And the third point... Uh, I decided that I would imagine what travel would be like in a post-COVID world. This, I would say, was a risk. This was a big risk to take. And I don't know if I just got markers who respected the risk and thought, you know, that shows like a good level of French. We're going to reward her for that. It's possible I could have got markers who were like, that goes too far beyond what these articles are about. I know that because one of the markers um, said to me after I had done the exposé, he said, Vous avez uh, courageusement uh, abordé uh, l'idée du voyage après le Covid, something like that. And the way that he said courageusement, I was like, oh. <laughs> you know when someone's like, yeah, that was really brave how you did that. And you're like, thank you. Anyway. That's what I chose to do. It paid off for me. Um, what I would say is if you're asked to provide your own opinion, just make sure that you really say, okay, now I'm stopping resuming the articles and I'm going to provide my own opinion for this third point. I think I said something like, je vais essayer de regarder dans l'avenir pour... Um... Oh, I just don't even know. It was so long ago. 
Okay, back to the preparation room. I've got an hour to prepare this speech. What I did not do is write a speech word for word. I did a lot of sentence constructing in my head. I wrote out my first sentence of my speech um, because I knew, yeah, if I had that as a jumping off point and I had enough dans un premier lieu, um, deuxièmement, et pour conclure, uh, and cependant, et en de plus, et en outre, and all those connectors that I had sort of been using in my practice goes, I knew that they were all going to come, so I was like, I don't need to write all that stuff out, I'm just going to write a skeleton. Introduction, I talk about what I'm going to talk about, I make sure that everything I'm going to mention is in there so that I don't start kind of <laughs> going off on a tangent because that's where you can really lose marks. I'm getting a bit cold. Yeah, you can speak the best French in the world in this exam, but if you don't structure your arguments and limit yourself from going off on tangents that you haven't warned the examiners that you're going to go on, you can really still um, not do well. This, yeah, this is really... It's just as much about your competence in your own language, in, in your ability to structure thoughts and ideas, than it is about your ability to speak and communicate in French. So yeah, I wrote my first sentence. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I've written what I think it might have been, which is... Pour des milliers de Français, le fait de voyager a pour but de s'évader à son quotidien. Que ce soit l'aventure pour ceux qui s'ennuient ou bien la relaxation pour ceux qui ont des vies chargées. Something like that. Um, dans cet exposé, uh, je vais aborder le sujet des tendances de voyage chez les Français dans ces, pendant ces dix dernières années ou something like that. I don't know, but it was that kind of thing. Anyway, that was what I'd written for my first phrase. I just spent the time pretending to speak. I wrote my skeleton in, I'd say, the first half hour, 40 minutes. And then I honestly spent the next 20 minutes not really writing anything, just practicing speaking it uh, under my breath. The poor guy who was also doing his exam in the, in the room, in the table next to me, might have heard a bit of muttering. But this is about speaking. You can write whatever you want, but if you're not there making eye contact with the examiners, speaking to them and engaging with them, you're not going to do as well. So by the time the end of the hour came, I looked down at my paper. I thought, okay, I haven't written all that much. I had underlined things in the articles that I was going to refer to. Much better off doing that than copying out quotes word for word. Um, and it's a really good idea to make sure you keep referring back to the articles. So um, you say a quote, comme dit uh, le professeur, blah, 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 or comme... Um, Je vais citer uh, Monsieur blah 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 de l'article de France 24 um, and then say the quote, that sort of thing. Um, and it's it's perfectly fine to then get the article and like read it out to them. You don't have to memorize that as well. And that's a way to, to save time. Is anything you want to quote, just underline it and do little asterisks or whatever. Okay, so I've got my speech ready. Um, I get into the room, uh, there are two markers, there's a woman and a man, and the reason I say that, I mean, in my English brain, I'd walk into the room and be like, oh, there are two people, but you've really got to be like, in French, you've got to be like, am I going to say madame or monsieur? And so I was like, okay, there's a madame et un monsieur, I assume. And <clears throat> I walked in, I was the last person of the day, and I said, uh, bonjour. I probably could have said bonjour monsieur dame, that could have been good as well, a little bit more formal. Um, but basically I knew that this period before starting the actual expose would be kind of crucial to set up to set up a vibe. I'm just gonna get a jumper, it's too cold. I love wearing this shirt, but I'm just too cold. It's so sunny. I wanna pretend that summer is still lingering, but it's it's not, it's gone. I also hesitated about filming this video because I hate my hair at the moment so much. But look at these blonde roots. And then at a certain point it goes brown. Anyway, I'm getting it done on Friday. 
I'm going to try my best to explain in French what I want. D'accord. Where was I? So I walk into the exam room. There's a woman and a man, and I take note of that so I know that I can say bonjour madame and bonjour monsieur. Um, I walk in and I say bonjour. Probably could have said bonjour monsieur dame, but still bonjour is fine. And uh, they just say bonjour. And so as I'm putting my stuff down, I've got my backpack and whatever, I say, um, Vous avez passé une bonne après-midi? Something like that. And they're like, Where? 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 <laughs> and um, then I said, Est-ce que vous avez pu prendre des pauses? And I think this is something that these kind of small talk kind of questions are something that you can prepare, you know? Like, I, I guess. I don't think I like practice that phrase. <laughs> But I do think that I always knew I was going to walk in and, and try to talk to them a little bit. Because like socially it is just kind of, like exams are weird, but socially to just walk into a room and be like, Alors, aujourd'hui je vais vous parler de blah blah blah. It's just kind of weird. But if you can walk in and establish a little bit of a rapport, I think that's a great idea because you'll put yourself at ease. You'll plant <laughs> the seed in their mind that you are not only like a competent French speaker, but a competent kind of human being in terms of social interactions. Um, so yeah, I just found that I was so, I was so glad I asked those things because I was, wasn't sure like, is it my place, you know, to ask about how their afternoon's going. But I was like, we're in Australia after all, like that's what I would do in an Australian exam. They would forgive me if this is really impolite, if I'm, you know, asking questions about their day and I shouldn't be. Um, so I said, est-ce que vous avez pu prendre des pauses? And the woman said, no. <laughs> and the man said, oh, ouais, quand même. And then she was like, oh, ouais, d'accord, oui. 15 minutes. But I guess, yeah, for, um, for the French, une pause uh, should be at least an hour in the middle of the day, around midday, maybe midday to two. Um, so they definitely didn't get to do that. Uh, and now, living in France, I understand why the woman said no, pas du tout at the, at the start. Anyway, that was just a chance for me to kind of read their dynamic together. Um, that the woman was a little bit more like, no, we didn't even get to have a break. And the guy was like, oh, come on, we did. And I was like, cool. Got a bit of a sense for the vibes in him. Um, and so they introduced themselves and they were like, donc, bienvenue, uh, je m'appelle... Uh, France, said the woman, and she was like, Et je vous présente Boris, and he said, bonjour, and I said, bonjour, um, and then they were like, so uh, whenever you're ready, and so I started and I made a faux pas, <laughs> I said, to start my speech, I said, bonjour, France, et Boris, and as soon as that came out of my mouth, I was like, I should have definitely said bonjour madame, bonjour monsieur, or bonjour monsieur dame, aujourd'hui je vais vous parler, etc. Or je, vais, je vous parlerai, ou aujourd'hui je vais aborder le sujet de blah blah blah. And the fact that I said bonjour France et bonjour Boris, c'est un peu comme la famille autour de la table, quoi. C'est pas approprié pour les examens. And so. I'm so glad that I was able to bounce back from that because I was after that moment I was like, no, I fucked it up. All the months leading to this, I fucked it up. I've used their first names. But I think in that moment, like this thought came that was like, you know what? That's what you do in Australia. For all they know, I've never lived in France. It was true. I had spent some time in France before, so I really shouldn't have made that mistake. But I think that over the course of the speech, I was able to kind of show my good intentions and that I wasn't intentionally being disrespectful. So, je vous conseille de dire bonjour, monsieur, dame, or whatever applies to the people in the room. Anyway, I say my expose and I do enough of a kind of warning, like I am going to bring up my own opinions and I'm going to try to like look into the future and see what travel will be like after COVID. Um, and then, so, during this speech, they 
it's amazing how once the clock started, suddenly their eyes widened and they did this the whole time. <laughs> and they were writing. And so they looked down at their writing and every time they looked up, they were like, and I get, there must just be a thing amongst the examiners where you, you should look interested and encouraging. And I get that. But like, I just suddenly was like, oh my God, it's like two goldfish. <laughs> so just be prepared for that. I don't know what your examiners are going to be like, but there was just, yeah. So I just went with it. I, I tried to really kind of make as much eye contact as I could. And when they both looked down, I was like, good, good chance for me to look down. And we made it, we made it. I think the only way that that expose went well is that I did a lot of practice exposés, which I timed. So by that point, I was pretty, I had a pretty good sense of how to fit my speech into 10 minutes. So I finished the speech and they said, great, thank you, we're gonna move on to the debate now. And in this debate, it was interesting to just see the different examiners' strategies. So Boris was, or Monsieur, I don't even know his last name, but Le Monsieur was a little bit more about kind of, I, I, in when I brought up my own opinion about um, travel after COVID, I said that even though we might have like a tendency to think that travel will that we've learned our lesson from covid and and that we're gonna just like do more kind of small travel in our own countries and you know what a great impact that's had on the environment and maybe we'll, we'll keep not traveling internationally kind of thing after covid um boris said don't you think that actually maybe we have all learned our lesson and we have all learned that we can find the adventures that we crave like in our own backyards and I was able to kind of say, Monsieur, respectueusement, je pense que vous êtes beaucoup plus optimiste que moi. Et moi, je pense que il y a, y a qu'est-ce que j'ai dit? Il y a tellement de familles qui, qui ont été séparées pendant cette période, qui ont, euh, qui, qui veut se rejoindre, je crois. I, I don't really know exactly what I said anymore, but it was something along the lines of like, Families have been separated, couples have been separated, like people have been separated from their dreams of what they want to do after school or like in retirement and everyone's postponing that. And I think the second that that, especially in the context of Australia, which, you know, a lot of places are still locked down in Australia and there's still a travel ban. I was just like, as soon as there's not a travel ban, I think everyone's just going to take off because they'll just be like so sick of not being allowed and so we were able to have a little bit of a back and forth over that and i really enjoyed that and i think that engagement of being like monsieur je pense que vous êtes beaucoup plus optimiste que moi that's very it's getting into like a proper back and forth which is what they want so i that would be my advice there is if the examiners start to kind of position or like propose a, a point to you if you can try and disagree try and say um Oui, je, je, je vois votre perspective, je ne sais pas. Euh, oh, je trouve que c'est un, un point intéressant, mais moi, par contre, je crois que... Something like that. Um, or like... Oui, vous avez raison jusqu'à un certain point, mais euh, en général, I don't know, that sort of thing. You can say, like, respectfully, just be like... Um, that's a good point. I'd like to propose, you know, on the other hand, de l'autre côté, on peut voir les choses comme ça ou comme ça. Um, the madame, on the other hand, her strategy in the débat was to get me to talk a little bit more about certain things in the article. And that stressed me out a little bit. So she was like, um, you know, it says here that some French people like to go to Club Med. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more about why this might be? <laughs> and so I was like looking in the article and I was like, um, like I read out from the article and I like, I just didn't know what to kind of add that I hadn't already said. Um, and so this, I worried that I kind of missed an important point or, or not kind of got the essence of one of the articles. But I think in those moments, um, you can really say like, 
Pardon, est-ce que vous pourriez euh, un peu élaborer sur euh, ce dont vous aimeriez que, que je parle? Ou oh, maybe not so much that, but like. Um... I think the phrase I'm looking for here is something like um, Veuillez m'excuser, madame, mais est-ce que vous pourriez euh, élaborer un tout petit peu, s'il vous plaît, sur exactement ce dont vous aimeriez que je parle? Bit of a mouthful, but there you go. And I think, yeah, like how I am now, I just got a little bit lost. And then I think I said something like, pardon, c'est peut-être que, que je vais pas dans la direction que vous aimeriez que j'aille, mais euh, je trouve que voilà, tout, tout est dit dans l'article. C'est vrai qu'il y a des différentes tendances par rapport au voyage. Et euh, finalement, ça dépend. Um, de l'individu something like that you know something you'd say in English where you're like we've all got our different tastes and in the end it's up to the individual <laughs> you know like you can't disagree with that um, so I think I found myself saying a few things like that when, when France was pointing to different um, parts of the text and asking me to talk about them um, But yeah, they ended the debate after about 15 minutes and said, you know, congratulations. Um, they'd asked me, they asked me if I'd lived in the French speaking country before. And I was like, um, non, j'ai passé uh, deux ans à Lyon. And they're like, ah, oh, deux ans. And I was like, pardon, uh, deux semaines. <laughs> and that was just like a bit of a weird, awkward moment because it's true, I lived in Lyon for two weeks in January 2020. Um, but yeah, I feel like they were like, what? Um, <laughs> so another kind of strange moment, but then I left and yeah, I think, oh, they said, I actually, no, no, I didn't leave. I said, I'm hoping to do a master's in France and that's why I'm doing this exam because they asked why. And once again, I was really lucky that I was at the end of the day because they had the time to ask me this. They weren't on like a tight schedule. Um, so that was really nice and, and they, you know, wished me the best of luck and, and yeah, I left with like a really good feeling. So there you go. That was my exam. It was a mixture of luck and preparation that served me um, well to, to get that 25 marks out of 25. Um, I feel, yeah, super happy with the result. French is so fun. It's so frustrating sometimes, but it's so worth it. And so if you're working towards this exam and you're feeling a bit like, oh God, how on earth can I get through this? Um, I'm with you, you got this, take it slow, do what you're interested in, listen to French stuff that, that you like, that you enjoy about topics that interest you. And I'll see you soon for the next part of this series. Bye, à bientôt, ciao.